Hi there! Hope you're doing well. This is Tim, and I'm coming back at you with a new animation video. And this is going to cover the second part of the walk tutorial we've been working on. So, let's dive right back in. And in case you missed the first video, check out the description. It's, uh, it's right there for you, so you can watch this from the start. So, with uh, last week as a small review, we focused on uh, creating a basic uh, lower body uh, layout for our walk. So we kind of did that. You know, obviously it's not the best thing ever, but... We're just doing this for demonstration purposes. I also threw things like this in linear for our next steps. So if you look at the hips, it's rotating in linear. All right, so we're going to be focusing on the upper body today. The first thing we're going to focus on is le spine. I don't know the French word for spine. My apologies. <laughs> Je suis désolé. <laughs> so what a lot of people will do, especially early on with the spine, and we're going to focus on these three down here because this lower one is your lower spine. The middle here is your waist. And the upper one here is your upper spine. And we have this here, which is your chest, and you're able to kind of push things a little bit more that way. But uh, for right now, we're just going to focus on these three. Now, early on, a lot of people will grab these controls and kind of just throw them all in one direction. And it's, hey, how you doing? <laughs> uh, we don't want to do that. Because if you got up right now, and you did a little jig in place, the majority of your rotation would come from your waist. That's kind of uh, where all the rotation comes from. So we don't want to grab all these at once and have that same value for each because the rotation will look weird throughout the body. Then again, if you have something posing for a camera, the important thing is that it looks good on the camera. So if something has to be overly or underly rotated than what you might normally do uh, outside of a cycle, that's completely fine. So do, do what you will in order to make sure it looks dank and good. <laughs> okay, so we're going to jump in here. So the first thing that we're going to focus on is making sure that this is straight. So kind of ironic, I'm going to grab the Y, and I'm going to grab all of them and turn them. This is just so I know how far too far could be. So let's say 18, I feel comfortable with me thinking maybe for the waist. So the primary rotation in Y would be the waist. The secondary in this case, at least with how I'm thinking it, would be the lower spine, which we could say would be like a 12 maybe like a 11 or a 10, let's say 11. And then this would be the tertiary rotation, so that would be lower. Let's say that's like an 8. Might be pushed a bit more. That way it's kept straight. What we're also going to do is, uh, for people who might not know, basically the first key that we have here and the final key on 25, and this is also 24 frames per second, so it's a whole second later, the poses are the same. And then 13 is the, re is the reverse. So what we're going to do to save time is we're going to copy the key on frame 1. We're going to put it on frame 25. We're also going to copy the frame from 1 to 13. Now I'm going to open up our little graph editor. I'm going to grab all the Y rotation at 13 because it's supposed to be opposite. And I have my scale set up for reverse. So when we look at this, we have it rotating opposite in, uh, when the legs are opposite of each other. So just another way to save time. Uh, the other thing you want to focus on is the z-axis, which is side to side. Now, uh, if you might remember with the hips, especially when we're in the passing pose, the hips drop because our legs can be lazy, and that's why if we miscalculate walking over a sidewalk by just a little bit, we can trip on just a little millimeter of pavement because our legs are lazy. So we drop our hips typically, which means this has to counteract that rotation. And what I typically notice is that a lot of that rotation has to come from the lower end. Just again, depending on what you're doing, it can come from the top. So we're going to go back to frame one. And we are going to just give it, give it some slight rotation. Not, maybe not too much. Sometimes uh, I like starting from the passing pose, which maybe, you know what, let's just do that just for simplicity's sake. So we're going to make a keyframe there. We're going to grab that. We're going to move that up. Now, also before I do that, um, with the passing pose, just to keep it simple, we're going to move all the Y to zero. Because again, this is the passing pose, and the hips are at or pretty much at zero, then this should be at zero as well. Obviously, we can make a little bit of a delay. But we have that there. Let's kind of grab Z a little bit. Make sure it's a little bit straight. So we'll move that like there. Give it a value of six. Lower that a bit. And I'm just basically going to play around a bit around just a little bit here and basically we just want to try and make sure that this gets straight and that it's matching up the emotion that we want to get so let's say that's good it's mostly straight there and then obviously again we can grab all this we can move that to frame 
20, <laughs> uh, frame 19, sorry, I got stuck there. And then we can go back to the graph editor, grab all this, or uh, grab all the Z, which is right there. We're going to throw it in scale. And what happened there? <laughs> there we go. <laughs> there was a weird glitch there. So basically now all that's in reverse, and we're all set. All right, so while you guys were gone, I basically played around with these a little bit more, similar to with the hips, how we have it in contact, and then down, and then passing, then up, and then reverse contact. We basically made keys on those poses. So we look at it from the front. We have our contact, we have our down, our passing, our up, and a reverse contact. And then we obviously mirrored. So we kind of scrubbed through these. We got some rotation in there. Look at that. We made that. <laughs> So the last rotation, of course, is rotate X, which is it rotating backwards. So I already added a little bit of rotation to it, and if you need the numbers, it's lower back negative 6, waist negative 9, and then upper back negative 5. So basically, um, like any tail uh, or generic thing with overlap, us kind of thinking of this as a noodle rather than a human body, basically, and I'm going to start on the up pose, as forces go down, the curve will mostly curve into itself. So by the time it gets to the bottom, it's having the most negative vertical velocity, so it'll bend back the most, because once when this starts going up, we have that reaction force, and it bends back forward a little bit. Let me kind of show you a bit. So I'm going to go up here, and we have our rotation, let's say, at 6. Let's see if that looks good. Yeah, let's say that looks good. Let's say it's our prima donna. <laughs> so basically, I would save a keyframe there, all of our negative values right there. And then by this point, this would have the most rotation back. Now I don't want to, I want uh don't want for this walk too much of my um upper right there rotating back. So we're gonna grab these and let's say the lower let's set a key for them for them first actually. Let's say the lower but goes back by like say like a value of three. Let's say the waist actually goes back in the same amount of value. Maybe it'll go there faster, and then we'll move that by two. So let's say that's good. So then obviously, what we do is we work on the middle pose. So we obviously want this to build up because the negative y value is building up over time. So let's say that's seven, because it's closer to the six than nine. We have nine there to 12, so let's make that 10, because it's closer to nine. And then we have this from five to negative seven. So we can give that like a 5.5. So that means as this is going from the top to the bottom, it's building up over time and bending back more. And obviously you want to play with timing with parts, and the higher it's up, it's going to rotate differently at different times. So I'm going to play around with this for a minute, and I'm going to show you guys what uh, the rotation should look like. Alright, so I played around with this a bit more, and I also moved it into linear. So basically, uh, it's not too much. I didn't want to go too exaggerated with this, but we do get kind of this more bounce step. You'll see it up here from how that's kind of going backwards a lot more. So basically, um, we want to make sure that all these are bending out uh, and having the right rotation. Now in this example, all these are bending backwards at the same time. If I kind of open this up in the graph editor, and I'll just grab the rotation X. If you look here, I did play around with one of them a little bit, but if you notice, all the curves are kind of moving up and then down and then back up in the same context. We don't want that really because uh, everything doesn't move with the same amount of time. So you, it would, it's up to your discretion to figure out how you want to move the timing and the spacing in order to make sure that this is deforming how you wish, unless this is exactly what you want, to which I don't know. <laughs> so overall, if we look at this, and if we look at it from the front, it kind of has a weird motion inward to itself, but let's say this is good. Let's say this is what we want, just for demonstrations and time purposes. So other than that, uh, the head's pretty much the same ordeal, just making sure. Sometimes we can keep the neck straight and forward how we want. Then we can have the chin studding out. It's a little bit more, <laughs> a little bit too forward there. Maybe he's just like really confident and happy. Look at that. <laughs> so the next part that we're going to talk about for a little bit are the arms. So this arm here is an FK arm. This arm here is an IK arm. So in case you don't remember from the other videos, an IK handle stays in place. So I could put this anywhere I want, no matter how much this bends it will remember its translated position. This is good if you want to keep something on the table, just kind of leaning over the bar table, trying to get a secret. The FK handle will basically stay with the rotation of the body. 
They typically want to use FK handles in cycles, and you want to use IK handles when necessary. So I'm going to show a little demonstration of both. So we're going to key on the down pose. Now why there? Because in a contact, typically, uh, the hand is actually still moving forward. There's that little delay of limbs. The hand doesn't really move forward or backwards, depending on how the legs are positioned, until the down pose. So because this leg is forward and the arms and the legs are opposites of each other, we're going to move this a little bit back. So we're going to move that, let's say, let's try to keep that a little bit straight. Let's move that right there. We obviously have things like the shoulders to worry about, but for this video, we're going to skip the shoulders. It's a whole other topic entirely. So we're going to move that back. And we're also just going to focus on the forward and backward motion. So let's save a key going to the next down pose on frame 16. And on frame 16, because the legs are opposite of each other, the hand would be forward. We're just going to move that. I'll move that a little bit in as well. And we'll move it up as well, like that. We'll get the rotation forward as well. And then obviously, like slow in and slow out, slow out, we move this a little bit forward. Then for the passing, it's about halfway. Or for, well, for the up pose, sorry, I'm just so used to that. <laughs> and then by this, it's a lot more forward. And again, you can play around with the dragging however much you wish. So maybe delay that a little bit more, maybe bring it down. Because we want to think of the elbow as a rotation point, so we would move that back up. Maybe keep it a little bit more back. There we go. And we just fiddle around with it however much we wish. Look at that. We're making an animation. <laughs> and basically, one thing leads to another and you get a nice looking animation. <laughs> a lot nicer than this, I'll definitely say that, because we're just kind of messing through this. <laughs> so there we go. So let's say this is good. we got a nice hand motion forward and backwards. Look at that. We can also clean that by going to the front. And when the front, when it gets into the downward pose like that, we kind of want it to swing forward. We can play with the elbows too, which we'll do. We want it to swing forward like that. And then when it's back, maybe have a little bit more reserve. So I have to bring it out a little bit more. Maybe it goes for a, like a larger, larger kind of swing outwards. And we bring it in a little bit. There we go. Maybe we want to keep it back out. Maybe make this one a little bit more subtle. There we go. Again, we're just kind of playing around with ideas right here. So let's say that's good. Hand rotation and all, fingers not being used. Let's say that's perfect. And basically, with the FK, we would do the exact same thing. Except these joints are only in uh, controls are of rotation. So this here is the elbow, that there's the hand and the wrist, and you basically would do everything there, counteracting the body, which the downside is that if you have to change something with the body, you have to change something with the arm. The good news is that you get a little bit more individual control on what you want to go to. IK arms, it's really, really easy just to place this here and then rotate it and say, hey, that's good. The issue is that, especially for early animators, is that... Uh, everything will kind of seem floaty. It'll seem like the arms are completely detached from the body. You almost have like a 3D puppet show going on. So, for the most part, uh, that's basically what we're gonna oh, we're gonna talk about in this video. We have the rotation of the spine, get a little bit more flow, and then we also have a basic points of how the arm should be set up. Not the best explanation. I apologize. Oh, look at that arm right there. So for the next video, I'm going to make sure this is all cleaned up just to show you what smooth arm motion looks like, and then also cleaning up the head. And then we're also going to go into tinier details such as detailing in the graph editor to make sure that things like the hips and spines are moving appropriately and smoothly. And then we're also going to dive a little bit into things like hair and some facial expressions, maybe a little bit of facial expressions, uh, just to get a more finesse detail of what you want out of your character. Okay, so well, again, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!